Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you don't know me, my name is Arlene, and here I'm gonna talk to you about the 10 things that I gave up in 2023 and 2024, I'm gonna continue to give up, in order to survive this inflation. Some of them I'm happy about, and some of them I'm not. So let's get into it. Number one, leasing vehicles. So I used to buy my vehicles. My first car, my dad got it for me. It was an old car and I totaled it three years later. Got the money for it from the insurance company. Second car was a Honda Civic. I bought it under my name. My mom co-signed. I paid every single month for five years, paid off the car, drove it for almost 10 years. Third car was my ex-husband's idea to buy a certified used Honda Element. I drove that car for many years. Eventually it became his car. The first time that I leased the vehicle was a Nissan Leaf and it was an all electric car and I used to work very close to where I lived and I used to be able to plug it in at work. It was a four year lease and I was very happy and excited to finally be able to drive a car that I liked because my first car, I didn't quite pick it. It was my dad's choice. Second car was by necessity. It wasn't necessarily the kind of car that I wanted. Third car was the kind of car that my ex wanted. Again, wasn't a car that I liked or wanted. Sorry, I'm struggling with the light here. Anyway, this was like the first car that I'm like, man, I like this car. It's white. I always wanted a white car. It had leather interior, it had Bose speakers, and it was all electric. Very cool. I needed a regular car because I changed to a different type of job that would require me to switch from one office to the an another and drive all over my city. So I needed a gas car. And I got a uh, Honda, no, I'm sorry, not Honda, Toyota. CHR and it was so cute. I enjoyed it. I drove it for three years and then I switched to another lease and I got the car that I have been wanting for most of my life, which was a Mazda CX-5, a 2022. With each consecutive lease, the first lease was four years, second lease was three years, and now this lease was going to be three years, the lease payment got more and more expensive. Duh because it's inflation. Even if you go back to the same dealership and you have loyalty or you go back and get the same car, with each passing year, cars are getting more and more expensive progressively. So I got that out of my system, that whole desire to drive a brand new car every three years. I used to believe that leasing a vehicle was the smartest thing you could do because A, buying a brand new vehicle depreciates in value greatly within the first three years. And when you're leasing a vehicle, you're basically paying for the difference. You're paying for the depreciation of value. So what is the car going to cost um, from the time that it's new until the time that your lease is over? How much money did it depreciate? That's what you're paying for. And then they turn around and they sell the car for what it's worth and make profit off of it. Buying a used car, you never know who drove it. They might say, oh, it's in great condition, but when we bought that certified used Honda Element, it smelled like dog and cigarettes, and it took months for that smell to go away. And, you know, there's probably gonna be issues and problems that you don't even know about, and you don't know who drove it. Buying brand new, buying used, or leasing. I discovered that the smartest thing that I could have ever done was purchase my lease. I bought out my Mazda early. It was a three year lease and I bought it in the 20th or the 21st month into my lease. The reason why it's so smart is because when you sign the lease agreement, they project what the value of the car will be when the lease is over and they put that on your lease agreement. Meaning this is the purchase price should you want to purchase your vehicle at the end of the lease. And that is obviously done in, in the past. This is done projecting into the future. We don't know how much the value of the car will be. Will it be higher? Will it be lower? We don't, we don't know. So they just give you an estimate. And from 2022 until now, cars have significantly gone up in price. Buying a brand new car is getting more and more difficult. If I had waited to turn in that lease at the end of my contract at 2023, Four? No, 2025. I would have ended up paying significantly more monthly for another vehicle. So what I decided to do was purchase it. I did not set foot into my dealership. Don't ever do that. I called my dealership. I said, I need to speak to someone in the finance department. I said, I need you to please submit to me my leasing agreement and a purchase offer. The leasing agreement shows you how much you're supposed to pay in those three years. You got to pay off the difference of what you, it was a contract. You can't break that contract and what the, the purchase price is. And there was no dealer fees, there was nothing. I made sure that they didn't put any of that boo caca in there because you don't need to be paying that. If you walk into the dealership, a salesman is going to convince you you need to pay that. The only thing you end up paying is the sales tax twice. You paid it once when you started the lease and now you're paying it again because you're buying the car. And I shopped around for a third party lender. I shopped around for an auto lender. 
and I basically financed my vehicle all over again. Between talking to them and talking to them and signing documents, everything got taken care of by phone and email. Documents were signed, boom, car is mine. And now I have a fixed note for five years. I am not overpaying. My vehicle is actually worth more than what I bought it for today. And even if it wasn't worth more, you're saving money in the long run because by the time I finish paying off my car, it will still be relatively new. And I plan to drive it until the wheels fall off. I am now a believer in purchasing and holding onto it for a long time. But then again, I have to disclose that I don't believe that either way is right or wrong. I believe that what is right for you depends on your specific circumstances and situation and what makes sense for you at the time given the circumstances. So right now with this inflation, with this difficult economy, being a single mother who has just purchased a home and you know I have other th other priorities, I don't care about driving a brand new car every three years if it means that I have to pay a higher note. I'd rather keep my note the same, pay a low interest rate, try to pay off my car as fast as possible so I can reduce as much interest rate as possible and just drive that puppy until she dies. That was a long one. Number two, professional, mani, pedi, lash extension. I no longer care to impress people who aren't going to ensure my survival. So if there's a man who's gonna be my husband, who's gonna say, honey, I'm gonna help pay the bills, then he's the only one that I care to impress. Because if everyone else is not paying my bills, they don't have to worry about what I look like. These lashes that I'm wearing right now are not professionally done. They are clusters that you can buy on Amazon. You can buy a pack of 240 for like $9. And you only put like about five Five, maybe six on each eye and that lasts you almost a week maybe two if you're careful with 240 of them I've had that pack since August September and it's still halfway full so it is a bargain and my nails are all natural I was doing a structured manicure with a gel pedicure every month because it lasts that long when you pay for that type of service but it was coming out to $120 per month every time I would go and get them done plus tip because I'm not cheap I'm gonna give them a tip and then the lashes were hundred and forty dollars a month because it was seventy dollars to refill and you had to refill like every two weeks those things had to go number three of things that I gave up in 2023 and 2024 in order to survive this inflation is my massage membership this one I am not happy about because I am a sonographer I'm an ultrasound tech I use my right arm all day long scanning people and I use my left arm using the machine and I sit at a computer a lot and I'm constantly getting muscles in my neck and my shoulders. These trap muscles feel like cement. It's like 50, 60 or $70, something to that effect per month and you can get one massage a month. And I didn't always have time to book my massages so they would just accumulate and build up. And then I would have to try to like book several back to back just so I can catch up. So I didn't really cancel it. What I did is that I froze it because they allow you to freeze it for six months at no cost. I just had to use up all the rest of my hours. Otherwise I would have lost them and now it's frozen. And then supposedly in May it's going to start up again. And I think I may cons consider, you know, continuing to have that just because I feel like massages are almost medical. They're almost therapeutic. They help relieve a lot of the stress and the pain in my back. And to me, health is wealth. If I'm not well, I cannot work. If I cannot work, I cannot pay my bills. So that was just temporary because I was going through a really rough time between last year around July, August to about now, but things are starting to change for the better, thank goodness. So number four on my list is my Pilates classes and gym membership. Gym memberships for me are a waste of money. I hate going to the gym, not because I hate working out, but because I don't like being in crowded areas with people that I don't know. I'm, I'm not very fond of that social scene of the gym. It's a very personal private thing to be wearing tight clothing and people can see your body and how you're moving your body. I'd rather work out kind of privately or among women, but I also don't have the discipline to go. And especially since it's so dirt cheap, some gym memberships are $10, $20, $30, but you're like, eh, it's just $10. I don't feel like going today. And next thing you know, you've been paying $10 a month for a whole year. That's $120 down the drain. Even worse if it's more than $10. But what did motivate me was my Pilates classes. I had a club Pilates. And if you know, if you know or you don't know, for one class a week, it's about $109 a month. That's expensive. So if you miss one class, it's like, oh, I can't believe I just lost that much money. So just because of the fact that I didn't want to lose the money, it was a motivator, even when I didn't feel like going to class to go. But with that said, with that said, 
every time I went into my class, even if I wasn't in the mood, I very much enjoyed it. It wasn't wall Pilates or floor Pilates, it was reformer Pilates, where you get to use the reformer machine and you get to use, you know, the, the, the foot straps and all these things. Yes, I know you can do free Pilates in your living room on the floor, but it's different when you use a reformer. There's ranges of motion that they implement and you're in a class and you have a teacher pushing you, which is good for me. It reminds me of dance class when I was a kid. That was very enjoyable to me, but it's very expensive. I tried freezing it, but they were gonna charge $15 a month while it was frozen, just to have it frozen. I'm thinking, so I'm paying $15 a month for nothing. I'm trying to save money here. I canceled it and I don't know if I'll be returning, which is kind of sad because I love Pilates, but maybe I'll return someday, but not anytime soon. So number five is filling up my gas at any old gas station. The convenience of saying, oh, I need gas. I'm just gonna go to that one. Like who cares? Money is no object. I used to do that. There was once a time where I was being very frugal because I was starting off new and I had just purchased my first home with an FHA loan and I, and I used to have the Shell Fuel Rewards program because I have T-Mobile and T-Mobile offers this thing called T-Mobile Tuesdays where every Tuesday you open up the app and you get uh, 10 cents off the gallon. If you have the Shell Fuel Rewards program, it's five cents off the gallon, so that's 15 cents. But then I started getting lazy when I started doing a little bit better and um, I was tired and I was heading home and I would just go to whichever gas station was near. Some of them were cheaper, some of them were more expensive, but the point is I wasn't paying attention to the price. So now what I did is I, I got a Shell MasterCard, which gives an additional, I think it's a 20 cents off the gallon. So you get 10 cents from T-Mobile, five cents for being a member, plus 10 cents for having the card. So that's 25. So the total is 25. The first three months, there was a promotion where I was getting 50 cents off the gallon, but the first three months have already passed and now I'm getting 25 cents off the gallon, which is really good. And I try to figure out which shell nearest me probably has the lowest uh, price at that time. And I consider that plus the 25 cents I'm getting off and that is helping me. So that is one thing I gave up is the luxury of just not even having to think about what gas station I'm going to. I actually have to think about it now. Number six on my list of things that I gave up in 2023 and 2024 is grocery shopping for myself. I have kids, they're 16 and 12. If you know anything about teenagers, you know how they eat. They, um, ah. yes? Yes. Okay. Sorry. I forgot that I was making pasta. Oh my lord. I was, you, I used to grocery shop and buy myself like a bottle of wine or like a little, like I used to buy things for me and things for my kids, things for my household. I basically now only shop for my kids and I survive on whatever. My mom thankfully lives very close and my grandmother lives with her and they love to cook and they always prepare a little bit of food so I don't have to worry about buying dinner ingredients such as meat, poultry, you know, vegetables, things like that. But I used to meal prep and buy myself, you know, vegetables and meat and make my own sort of meals, but I eat whatever they offer me. Um, I get coffee for free at work. I take packets of oatmeal to work and I have that in the morning as well. Um, I try not to eat out or buy fast food or I never ever, and this is probably on my next list somewhere around here, Uber Eats or Grubhub or DoorDash. I don't do that. It's ridiculously expensive. I've actually never really done that. I think I did it once and it was from McDonald's and I paid like $17 for like a cheeseburger, fries, and a small drink. It was ridiculous. I said, I'm never doing this again. When my children are with me, I do co-parenting. So they're with their father for a week and then they're with me for a week. When they're with their father, I do not stock up on anything. I don't go grocery shopping. I eat whatever I find in my pantry. I make whatever I have work. There's always something in your fridge, whether it's eggs and then there's pasta in the pantry and you make, some, you make pasta with eggs. You figure something out, whether it's canned beans, doesn't matter, a sandwich for dinner, that's what I do. And when I know my children are coming, I don't want them to feel deprived. So I buy them their cereal, their chips, their cookies, you know, the snacks that they like, but I also buy healthy snacks like baby carrots and hummus and guacamole and uh, clementine oranges and apples and breakfast foods like salmon and bagels and cream cheese and orange juice. So there's plenty of things, um, nuts and things like that, that they can um, eat and snack on because they get free breakfast at school. They get lunch at school and my mom cooks dinner. So pretty much all I need to buy for them is snacks and that is coming out to about almost $200 each time I go to the grocery store. So that leads me to number seven on my list is Instacart delivery. Being a very busy single mom that works full time it, and not having a partner to like run out to the grocery store for me, I started doing Instacart and you have to pay for the delivery. I live in South Florida. Not all of the United States have uh, Publix, but South Florida and most Southern states have Publix and they charge you for that delivery. So I then started opting for pickup only 
but the Publix by my house is a little bit crazy and it's hard to establish like a place to park because people like to park in the pickup only parking spots just so that they can go in. They do that all the time here. Miami's filled with rude people. And they still charge you $1.99 just to pick up the groceries. But then I started, you know, getting curious and it's, this is part of my number seven is I also gave up not just the delivery for pickup, but I gave up my favorite grocery store. So Publix was my favorite, but now I use Walmart instead of Publix because it's free. The pickup is free. And I would go on the app and everything I had in my cart for Publix, I would look for it in Walmart and almost everything, 90% of everything. They had it at Walmart and it was several dollars cheaper. From almost a $200 bill plus the, the delivery fee or the pickup fee, it was down to like $130 at Walmart with no pickup fee. There was only a few items, maybe three or four, a handful of items that I couldn't get at, find at Walmart that had I had they had it at Publix. So I just went ahead and got them, but I'm lowering my bill in that way, in that sense, lowering my expenses by no longer choosing Publix and opting for Walmart. Number eight is streaming services and subscriptions. So I used to have Hulu and Netflix. I canceled them. I only pay for HBO Max now because it's $10 a month. I had Paramount for free because of my T-Mobile cell phone service. They offered it for free for a year and it expired. So they wanted to start charging me $8 a month. And I decided, nope, decided to cancel that as well. HBO Max might go soon because I don't really use it that much either, but it's the one streaming thing that I have. But there's also free Freebie, there's Roku, and there's YouTube. I love YouTube. I love watching things on YouTube. So I have something on the TV sometimes just to have something on in the background and I'm on my phone watching YouTube. Makes no sense. I don't know. Go figure that out. Try to make sense of most people. Good luck with that. Anyway, I also, you know how some people have access to, you know, Apple TV or Netflix or like some other streaming services because it's their friends or their boyfriends or their relatives or something like that. So there are like some things that I can watch that are not mine, but um, Amazon Prime, don't pay for that either. As long as you buy $35 worth of things on your Amazon cart, your shipping is free anyway, so that doesn't matter. So that brings me to, oh, subscriptions. Let's continue with that one real quick. The only thing that I do still have some subscriptions for is Amazon because of the toiletries. So shampoos, conditioners, body wash, deodorant, toothpaste, soap, thing detergent, things things that I use regularly. I shop online for the best price. I don't like bulk stores like Costco and BJ's. I don't have time to go in there with the ginormous shopping cart and spend half of a Saturday like stocking up. I feel like it's a waste of money. I also don't stock up anymore on Amazon like I used to. I used to have it on a regular cycle and as I would still have four shampoo bottles left and then four more would arrive. Well, now I kind of space them apart further where I'm almost down to like the last bottle or the last packet of toilet paper or um, paper towels before the next order comes in. So like sanitary napkins, paper towels, things of, that, of this nature. I don't shop for at the grocery store. I just put them on an Amazon um, subscription and they come to my house and I save money because I get to pick which ones are um, the best priced. But I used to have a hair coloring subscription that was from the internet, wasn't from Amazon, that was $25 a box. And I don't like to color my hair. My hair is naturally a brown color, but since I'm 40 now, I'm starting to get a few little white hairs. I mean, you can't really see them because I recently colored my hair like two weeks ago, but it's not even that much. I'd have to really like show you where they are. Why am I gonna pay $25 for a box to come to my house when I can go to the drugstore and they have perfectly good brands for like 10, 12, $13. And I could just, it's the same thing. I decided to cancel that and I just buy the box and I do it like every six to eight weeks. I also do not go to the salon to cut my hair. I cut my own hair. Um, it has a layered look. I don't know if you can sort of tell. Let's see if I can like make it. See that? So there is a technique to cutting your hair in layers and it's very very simple. You can probably look it up on YouTube or maybe I'll make a video for you guys. You have to brush your hair, make sure it's dry and a little bit oily and really 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 put it all the way to the top of your head and make a top 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 ponytail like this but it has to be smoothly brushed out so when all your hair is in the front it will be kind of like leveled and then you cut it from there and then you kind of cut it like this a little bit and by the time you flip your head back, you have layers. So then what you do is kind of part it where you normally would part it and then just check, you know, the length. Are they even, you know? Do they look even? Is one side long? Well, I don't have it parted perfectly in the middle, but is one side longer than the other? Yes or no? Should I trim a little here and there? And everybody's like, did you cut your hair? Did you color your hair? 
Your hair looks really cute. Like, yeah, I did it myself. As you go to a beauty salon, get some coloring done, get a cut, get a wash, get a blow dry, and you're gonna spend three, four hundred dollars. No, thank you. Number nine. Finally, we're at the one right before the last one. Clothes shopping. So, I spent years collecting clothes <laughs> because in my last long-term relationship, looking my best wasn't encouraged or prioritized. I was kind of in a toxic relationship and if I ever bought something new, it was kind of like, you're wasting money. And so I was making up for something that I feel like I never had. We were always kind of on the struggle bus, but now I'm on the frugal bus and it's by choice because I have other goals. These goals are more important to me and are more interesting to me than buying more clothing. But there was a time where I was just encouraged to like, just put on jeans and a t-shirt, you know? And so I didn't have a whole lot of, um, <clears throat> now I'm losing my voice. Give me one second. I'll be right back. Sorry about that. So I didn't have a whole lot of desirable options. I didn't have design or anything. But then again, that leads me to another, let me see if it's down here. You know what? I didn't include it in this one. So I guess I'm gonna include it. One thing that I, I never really buy, I've never really been a fan of in the first place, designer brands. By shopping, I mean like fast fashion, like Shane, Sheen, Timu, little boutiques, online boutiques. So I have a lot of like very cute outfits now that I have worn at least all of them at least once, but I don't wear them that often. I don't go out that often. I work in a medical office, so I wear scrubs almost every day. And I love being home in my loungewear. I bought this at the Kennedy Space Center and it was in the clearance rack. But um, I spent a lot of time making up for lost time and lost experiences that I never got to have, but I'm, I'm over it. I see it as wasteful and I don't feel the need to buy any more purses or shoes or accessories or jewelry or clothing anymore. Number 10 on my list of things that I gave up, 10 things that I gave up in 2023 and 2024 in order to deal with this inflation, Amazon surfing. If I log into Amazon out of boredom, like I have nothing to do, let's open up Amazon. I will surely find something that I think I need. I still use the toiletries and you know the Amazon subscriptions for all that stuff. I stop stocking up like I said earlier. I only order now when it's very low or all out. But what I mean by just you just start looking and it starts recommending things to you and you're like oh my god that's a cool t-shirt i need that t-shirt oh look at that little accessory for my house or that little decor or that cute little kitchen appliance that might be functional and i spent a lot of money and time doing this some things were useful some like at this this ring light that's right in front of me the light that's connected to my camera my camera i have a, an elliptical machine here that i did use today and i do use that i got on amazon but pretty much I feel like I'm set. Like I don't want to have a hoarded, you know, over collected sort of house. I, I like to keep things very clean, simple and minimal as much as possible. I avoid just surfing on Amazon because it's it's an addiction to see something interesting. So what I'll do is if, if I find myself doing that, I will put things in a cart and I'll just let it sit there and I'll just let days go by and I'm not even thinking about it and I forgot about it and you know what I just delete it or I put save for later and I don't I try to practice self-control and discipline and not spend money on it and also I try to not get on Amazon or any sort of shopping app or website instead I get on YouTube and I try to learn I try to fill my brain with information about investing about paying off debt about saving about how to be more frugal because in this economy that we live in it doesn't even matter if you're making a hundred thousand dollars a year it is not enough. It's getting very difficult to make it because of the cost of everything. Car insurance has doubled, homeowner's insurance has doubled, my water bill has never been this high, my electric bill, um, groceries. So since everything went up, it's like several hundred dollars a month that you now have to suddenly come up with. Cut back on some expenses and cut some costs. Um, so yeah, that's it. Um, that's the 10 things that I have chosen to give up. Let me know in the comments what are the things that you used to do that you gave up because of the inflation and that you're trying to save money on now. Are you happy about it? Are you not happy about it? Did it simplify your life? Did it make your life worse? If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to post weekly, maybe once a week, maybe twice a week. I'm still trying to figure out what it is that you guys want. I have made videos about toxic relationships because of my experience with them and you know dealing with narcissistic people and how to gain your confidence so that you can stand your ground and create boundaries but I've also made videos about how I became a homeowner in this difficult economy and being a single mom and if I hadn't purchased a home prior to this really insane economy 
which was right before, right in the nick of time. But let's say I hadn't, what would I do in this case scenario? I do have a video about that. And I plan to continue to talk about ways to survive in this world and thrive and travel and save money and invest. Be a single mom and find a way to make it so that you can create your own life and be happy. You don't need to have everything in the world in order to be happy. All you need is yourself and your dignity and your self-respect and the things that matter to you most. So um, please subscribe and hopefully I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.